Dove Vision, probably the most important question out of this entire interview. Victor, what happened to your cat? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that question. But I saw one of the cats had a, a cone on its head. Oh, yeah, you mean the other one, yeah. Basically, he scratches his eye all the time for no apparent reason. Like, we went to the cat uh, doctor, how do you say? And they told us like it's uh, probably like stress or something and, and then he needs to wear the thing and then a couple of weeks is off now. It might come later, but he's, he's fine now. <laughs> yeah, as a fellow cat dad, when I saw that in the video, I'm like, oh, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's so sad. Victor, Stefan, Dub Vision, welcome to America's Dance 30. Thank you, man. Thank you for having us. Congratulations on, is this your first number one? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shouldn't you know? <laughs> yeah. I know, I should know, but no, I, I'm pretty sure this is our first uh, one. Definitely is. definitely is. Well, we're just going to say it's your first number one. Nobody has to know. Congratulations on I Want to Be There being the biggest song in the country. How did it come together with Animal Kingdom? Jonas Blue, it's uh, his label. Um, he he sent us the vocal and the idea and... Um, Initially, it was supposed to be a collab with him. Um, so we worked on it, we worked on it. And then he said, you know what? You guys should do it just dub vision. But then uh, if you can do it on my label, it would be amazing. So yeah, we said, of course. And uh, actually we tried uh, a couple of different melodies and um, yeah, finally we, we had this melody and uh, Jonas really, really loved it. The whole team loved it. And um, yeah, we released it and uh, it's number one. I can't, can't believe it. Now, something that I like to find out a lot is how many different versions of a song there is, because a lot of times there will be like 30 different versions of a song. How many different versions of I Want to Be There are there? I think something like 30 or something, <laughs> but it's not like, <laughs> I guess there's probably like uh, three or four, like really different versions, like totally different ideas. And then. 25 of the same idea but just every time a little bit tweaking something and uh that's basically how it always goes when we make something oh that's not a cat yes <laughs> yes we need more cats in this <laughs> believe me if i could have brought my cats in here i totally would have <laughs> you should, man. the funny thing about it is that the, actually the first version of the track became the final version so we made the first version and we made the drop and then we thought like is this going to be good enough? It's going to be, maybe we need to do something else. And then we did a couple of more, yeah, uh, as Victor said, like 30 or something, different angles, like different drops, like different instruments. And then at the end, we just decided from, nah, it's going to be the first one. It was a good choice. And believe me, I, I totally get it with the small little tweaks. Like, for example, this video is probably going to have like eight versions to it because <laughs> I'll get done <laughs> editing it. Then I'll realize one small thing needs to change. So you got to go back and you got to re- yeah. Oh, my God. Being a perfectionist is a pain in the ass, isn't it, guys? <laughs> It really is. It never ends. Like whenever we finish a song, we still like we think like so maybe we could have changed this. We could have done this different. Like it's very frustrating sometimes. But I think I I see it with all the big guys who work with as well, like Afro Jack and, and Gary X. They're like on every detail, even more than us. So like focus. So I think it's a good uh, thing to have something like that. Now, with you guys being brothers, who gets the final say? on changes to a song when there's an argument about it? Uh, I think we never really disagree on uh, on something. Like, some, yeah, usually in the end, like, uh, I'm more of the technical, uh, so I do the mixing and stuff and the production, and Steve has the ideas, and then usually, like, the final tweaks, that's more of what I do, but then, obviously, Steve listens to it as well, and then we both agree on... Uh, the final version, but I think it, it rarely happens that we say like uh, one of us is like, no, that definitely shouldn't be in there. 
I can remember a song where that ever happened. So. Well, thank God on that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, congratulations on your new smash with Afrojack and Lucas and Steve anywhere with you. How does it feel to have somebody like Afrojack singing your praise as much as he does? Yeah, it's amazing. I guess we you know, we've been working for I think in a different interview he said like 2 years, but I think it's way longer actually. I remember we met him on Ultra and he finished with uh, Turn It Around, a track of ours. And then I wanted to uh, to talk to him. And then he was really busy, so but he didn't know who we were. So eventually I got to talk to him. And then I said, man, you finished just with our song. And he, oh, wow, the vision. And, you know, from, from that point of on, we started working on a lot of projects. We did um, a lot of um, mixing, mastering for him, like helping him, but also doing a lot of remixes, uh, original tracks, new memories, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I think this track, Anywhere With You, together with Lucas and Steve, I think I think it's the best track we made so far. It's actually funny you mentioned that because when I was talking with Nick, he said that the song is kind of the smash that you guys should have already had. You know, when, when yeah. you first started working on it with Afrojack, did you realize what it could turn into? Yeah, like instantly the vocal is so catchy. So you definitely like straight away know this is like something that people can sing along to. And it's, it's true what he says. Like we, for us, uh, vocals are really important in our music. Uh, we, we love the progressive, like the big, uh, big room stuff, pr- big progressive sound. And yeah, the vocals are really important, but it's pretty hard to find a good vocal, which is catchy and unique and, and everything. So yeah, when we heard that that vocal, we were like, okay, this can go in a in a good direction, and we worked on it. And then, yeah, in the end, it took a long time to to come to the final uh, process, but uh, final result. But it, it, we're so happy with it; it's amazing. Yeah, it is such a banger. Now let's get to know Stefan and Victor Dub Vision a little better with something I call Finky's favorites. <laughs> You are both cat dads. Which is your favorite cat? <laughs> You're not supposed to choose a thing, right? I'm glad yeah, you guys yeah, are having yeah. a hard time answering this because it's a trick question. Any cat dad knows that you can't you can. choose. No! no, it's it's your children. You can't choose your favorite I can, cat. I can choose though. I have, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have uh, the the mother cat uh, Nala. And she's like half Bengal. And um, we just recently had uh, baby cats, uh, five of them, and we kept one. And it's called uh, Mayo from my nest because he loves it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so she's the, the mother of, of all the cats. So I think, yeah, I should choose her. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully the other cats won't watch this. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the same way. I've had my older cat Aiden for, I think 13 years now. So technically he would be my favorite, but just in case Tucker's watching this, I love Tucker the exact (laughs) same amount. (laughs) Now you guys have worked with a ton of people, including Armin Van Buren, of course, Afrojack with the new song. What's your parents' favorite Dub Vision song? Our parents. That's Ooh. a good question. <laughs> I think I think this one is their favorite. I think this I is going to be a great topic song. over dinner. Yeah, we should. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question to ask on the, at the family yeah, dinner. Yeah. Now, you guys have hysterically already done a remix of Squid Game. That's you seen it? I, I did <laughs> see it. It's hilarious. <laughs> Of course, the you know the show's based on a lot of childhood games. Do you guys have a favorite game from your childhood? I love Twister. I, I, Twister? <laughs> is that is that a, I remember playing it in the schoolyard with the pets on the on the floor, right, with the colors? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would consider that more that of an a- adult drinking game. But oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I, have you guys ever played Butts Up? Have you ever heard of Butts Up? Butts Up. Butts no? Up. U double T? Yeah. This is one of those games that would never happen nowadays. This was a game that you would throw like a racquetball against the wall. 
and then somebody would try to catch it off the wall. And if you didn't catch it cleanly, like if it touched you or you dropped it, you have to run to the wall as quick as you can and get to the wall before somebody else throws the ball. If they yeah. do, you have to sit up against the wall with one hand and they get to throw the ball at you. Like, <laughs> what? No, we, we have similar stuff. We also have like, uh, obviously, we play a lot of soccer in, in Holland. And uh, you have to like uh, keep the ball high, like it can't drop, uh, can't drop on the ground. And if it does, you have to stand, and they can take a, sh- sh- a shot at you from behind <laughs> on your ass. So it's also like nowadays, with the ball, with the ball not just with the ball, yeah. not like with your foot in your. Like that, those kind of games, you look back and you're like, how did these even happen? (laughs) Right? right. Man, it's so crazy. (laughs) Now, of course, uh, I read that your parents made you learn to play an instrument when you guys were growing up. What's your favorite instrument now? I think mine is still piano because uh, it's easy. It's the easiest, I think, because guitar and like... Our parents uh, told us to do an instrument because we lived abroad a lot, a lot in the back in the days. So um, we lived in Syria, Damascus, um, and you know there was not a lot to do. So it was or hockey and football, or and uh, violin, guitar, or piano, just to you know keep yourself going and uh, yeah have a, have something to do. So we chose both piano actually. And um, I think mine is still piano because it's easy to connect it to the computer and then you can you just add a guitar to it and you can play guitar. Absolutely. But, you know, I think, think you're, you're, you're learning to play guitar, right? Because a real uh, guitar. Well, I, just, I just picked up the guitar. I uh, got one from my uh, stepmom. Yeah. And uh, I was, I'm just trying because I love, I love the sound of the guitar. And uh, like I've, I've been in the studio with Garrett, for example, and he plays guitar and it adds so much like special organic uh, a feeling to a track if you can just play. And now we have to like look up samples and, and uh, pitch everything. And when you can just play it in and record it, it's going to be so, so much easier. So uh, I'm really looking forward to learning, learning it a, a little bit more. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you. When, when you can hear a real instrument in a song, it just adds so much to that yeah. song. Now, a, a couple of months back, you guys played your first festival back in the Czech Republic. Uh, of course, you guys have played Ultra. You've played Tomorrowland. Do you guys each have a favorite festival? Mine personally was EDC Vegas with yeah. uh, the boys of uh, Firebeats. Uh, we performed as Metaphor, um, which is a special project uh, of us. And um, we only played, the cool thing was we only played our own music. We made a new group, especially for that gig. And because initially we were booked as a uh, Firebeats and Up Vision, but we decided to create a new group, only play our own music. And it was the main stage. I mean, it was, I've never seen something like that. So many neon lights. Yeah, I still get chills when I talk about it. Yeah, I've actually yeah. never uh, attended EDC Vegas yet, but I mean, I've done pretty much all the other ones, including, I don't know if you guys were ever at Tomorrow World when it was here in the States. It was in Atlanta. No. no. It was one of the most incredible festivals because it was in the middle of a forest. And to get from like one stage to the next, it was like a two mile walk and they had like the entire forest lit up. It was so incredible. Unfortunately, we got to pour one out for that festival. It's not here anymore. (laughs) So (laughs) so rest in peace to that one. Victor, how about you? Yeah, I think the same as Steve. Like that was, uh, I think the biggest crowd maybe we played for. It was huge, and the, the the lights and stuff was amazing. But I also always love uh, like Ultra Miami. Just the whole week there and everything is also. Uh, yeah, we haven't we've never played the main stage there, so hopefully that's gonna happen uh, one of one of these days. But, not on uh, wood. <laughs> not on wood. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, uh, and tomorrow, and Tomorrowland's also like there's so many crazy festivals, but. I think, like you said, EDC was the craziest experience for me. And I got to say, just at all the festivals, looking out and seeing tens upon tens of thousands of people, 
it you it just never gets old. Like it's just such uh, an incredible mm-hmm. view. It's surreal. Yeah. Uh, experience it's crazy well let's end this on an awe moment with you guys being brothers what is your favorite part about each other steve go first <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm thinking uh, i think yeah victor is, is a really really detailed person like if he um puts his mind to something if he wants something then um yeah he, he really goes for it for example in music I have to uh, refer to that. Like if there's a part when I say like, you know, this is good. This is nobody's going to hear the difference. Then he's going to tweak it maybe eight times more that it's even more perfect. Um, While I would have said already, like, you know, this is, this is good enough. Let's, let's go for this. So I think he's a, he's a very good eye for detail. I like it. No pressure, Victor, but you got to give a good one but, here. <laughs> I, I think Steve is very social. Like he uh, has a good way of talking to people. And uh, also like whenever we're out on tour, he's, uh, he knows how to uh, talk to the right people and have a good conversation and start the conversation off. And it's, yeah, I think this is really a strong point of him. And that's actually a characteristic that is very underrated because I'm yeah. I'm what's called an ambivert. Like I'm very introverted unless I have to be, then you know, I'm perfectly fine being on stage. But other than that, I'm yeah. I'm very introverted. So Stefan, that's a great characteristic to have to be able to speak with people. I wouldn't say you're introvert at I, all, actually. See, this is our first time meeting though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Next time when I see you, you're not gonna say anything, you're gonna just stand and wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna be like this. <laughs> Once I shut down this Zoom, I'm literally going to be back in the fetal position. So it's totally cool. <laughs> Stefan, Victor, congratulations on I Want to Be There going number one with Animal Kingdom, the biggest dance song in the country on America's Dance 30. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you for having us. And hope to hope we see you when we come to the U.S. Absolutely. And hopefully then anywhere with you will be your second number one.